Teams know what we're capable of now, and they're going to do things to, 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 to not let us do those things. So, again, all comes down to mentality. Not all of it. There's obviously technical stuff and stuff. You got me talking a lot more than I want to be talking right now. Because I know it's going to say, it's all about mentality. <laughs> Everybody's talking about, well, you fix the mentality, bring a sports psychiatrist in. No, but that's the main thing. <laughs> and it covers a lot of things. Okay. Hello, welcome everyone into the Mike Pecky's Coaches Show. I'm the host, mental strength coach, Brian Dunseth. <laughs> Gentleman next to me, Mike Pecky. Mike, uh, a little bit short with me last time, but that's okay. Because as you guys can see off his right ear, there's a gorgeous, gorgeous earpiece that Mike Pecky is rocking nowadays. Yeah, I guess I'm stepping up in the world. We were, our sides were switched. Yep, yep, yep. I was, the earpiece is on. It's not plugged into anything <laughs> yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. But hey, you know, answer me something. Completely uh, separate of everything else. I've been coming here, this is the third week now? Fourth. Fourth, yeah, week. fourth week. Time yeah, flies yeah, yeah. when you have fun. Fourth week, I've been getting off the same exit off of 15, which is 600 North. Okay. It's one of those things, every time I've gotten off of it, something caught my eye, but I'm thinking about the show and I'm going like this, and it dawned on me today. Can you explain something to me? I thought I got to know the roads around Salt Lake area. Okay. How is it that I come off an exit called 600 North, yep. and at the, at the end, I can make a left to go west or a right to go east? How? I'm being serious. Explain to me how that is possible. Grid system. But Everything. I'm going off of 600 north, no, and then getting, I can either go east or west. You're getting off at 600 north, and then you got... I, so I, the you, exit is just for the 30 yards yeah. that you're getting off. No, no, that, no. That's no. what they're telling you. That's that's the street, and then you want to go left or do you want to get right? But but doesn't doesn't make sense to me. I'm all 600 up, north, I could, I, and I have to end up going <laughs> east. It doesn't make sense. Hey. I had to, I had stay, to ask that stay question. Stay weird, Utah. My gosh. Hey, uh, so dressed up now. He looks sharp tonight. Oh. What, what do we got going on? Well, I wish I could say because I've been dressing down with the T-shirts over yeah. the last couple of weeks, but um, might have date night tonight with the wife. Okay. We're just figuring it out. Um, and if I do, we're going to the greatest restaurant for sure in Salt Lake, if not one of the best in America I've been to. You want to guess what it is? I think, I think they're, my, they're my neighbors. Tony Beltran. Tony Beltran's father-in-law, Takashi. Best, possibly, for sure, the best sushi, best Japanese seafood and everything I've ever had. Perhaps the best restaurant I've ever eaten at. Okay. So planning a big night tonight, so I had to dress up nice. Man, you are pushing it hard to make sure that... Uh, you going to get a free meal out of this? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm not pushing the restaurant. Okay, okay, I, I was there, just making there's, sure. <laughs> there's a three-hour wait every time I go there. T Tony's still angry that I haven't put him in with a broken oh, meat yet. Um, all right. Mentality is a big conversation. We watched the video kind of coming in of, of you speaking with the press earlier this week. Mentality can have a bunch of definitions, right? It, 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 mentality is different for every single player out there, every single person in, in every single walk of life. Is there, is there a difference between, I guess, an individual mentality and a collective mentality when you use that word? You are, you are literally hitting on and feeding into exactly what I would talk about about mentality. Okay. First, you have to talk about the definition of mentality, and, and there's a couple of definitions in whatever context you're using. In the context we're talking about, it's the way of thinking for an individual uh, or a group. Uh, and then it's important to point that out because that's a big difference between just one or two or three or four individuals and an entire group. Yeah. You know, if, if, it's, uh, if it's the entire group whose mentality is off, the question is, how do you teach a grown man a way of thinking that goes along with yours and how you want a vision to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and people, I'm not a psychiatrist, even though I did minor in college, by the way. True story, I was a minor in psychology. Um, but the, the question is, is, is at what age can you teach somebody a mindset perhaps they're not accustomed to the, yeah. throughout their life? Whereas if it's a handful, one, two, or three players, and the rest of the group has the mentality, then they have to either get on board or, or, or they're off shift. Is it, is it a fascinating... Listen, when we, when we played in the league, right, you had smaller locker rooms, smaller roster sizes, um, and now not only is it, is it bigger, uh, more grandiose, the scheme of Major League Soccer, but the dynamic's a little bit different. You think about the nationalities, you think about the, the religions, you think about the sexuality, yeah. you think about uh, it, people's individual background of, of, of the hunger and the desire to not only prove themselves, but provide for their families yeah. and, and provide for the longevity and... You know, their kids and all of those things that come into play. 
have you noticed kind of, and obviously social media and how social <laughs> media affects kind of the younger generation. Have, have, have you noticed that maybe everything becomes just a little bit different over the last couple of years with uh, where we're at in 2018? 100%. One hundred percent. I don't know if I would survive. Well, I, I've said it before. I, from a skill level and playing level, I, I wouldn't survive in a league right now. It's just gotten so much better. But you throw in the things you're talking about. I mean, I had an agent my whole entire career. I think my agent spoke on my behalf maybe four times in 13 years. <laughs> now, you know, if, if, if the wind blows wrong, the agents call up. You know, uh, the social media, like you said. Uh, you know, watching in, in training and, and uh, not in training, before training, or even sometimes before a game, guys on their phone. And I'm a big believer in ad adapting, adapting to situations and adapting to a way of life. Uh, things I don't believe in, but you have to adapt. You adapt or you die, yeah. you know? So I've understood certain things. Uh, but to get back to the mentality thing, and I want to make it very clear, uh, the other day with the clip that just showed when I was in front of the media, and our short interaction after the game, uh, mentality is not a huge problem for our team. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I have to be very honest with you. And when I talk about mentality, people perhaps all of a sudden go into these grandiose things about there's something crazy going on. And there's no, 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 no. It's the little things, you know? And for me, uh, we've talked about it before, you know, the way I was as a player, and, and that's perhaps unfair because of all the circumstances surrounding it. But, and, and again, my skill level, I had to fight for everything I had. Yeah. I came to work every day, and my mindset was I don't have a starting position. Even though I started 20, average of 27 games for 13 years, every day my mindset was I do not have a starting position. You know, and how could I go to a player who perhaps doesn't have that mentality and say, you need to have this mentality. It's not something you could teach at times. Uh, we're supposed to transition, but I know no, Tyler. No. no, no, because I'm not going Tyler. to Tyler. Tyler, I'm keep Tyler going. He's, be he's quiet, got all right? the earpiece. He can hear you, Tyler. We're running on something. You, you, you bring up something fascinating, and I, and I think maybe this is kind of the old guard, kind of the, the late 90s guys, because I agree with you, Mike. I, I remember having this conversation at one point with my parents, and they were asking <clears> me how it was going. I was in Boston, and the rosters were 18-man rosters. So it, in a weird way, it was, it was more forgiving, yet less forgiving yeah. than it is right now, yeah. because you had to be better than anyone else. And the amount of guys that came through every single week and were trying out, it was a constant battle, especially from like that 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 man roster. I remember telling my parents, I feel like there's guys on this team that have more talent in their pinky toe than I have in my entire body. But I'm gonna I'm gonna be in the top three for yeah. every fitness test. I'm yep. gonna run my tail off afterwards. I'm gonna stay after, I'm gonna give everything I have. My soul I, I didn't take advantage of the Project 40 money to go back to college because I didn't feel like I was good enough. And because they gave you $1,000 for the year. Well, at Cal State Fullerton, <laughs> that would have got you like three semesters, <laughs> just yeah. so you know. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 but becomes, you... it becomes a fascinating conversation because I think when people watch a game, they'll say, okay, our team should dominate. This player should dominate. And when you come up against a group or a team and you see kind of individual battles start to tilt one way or another, I think what you and I have always had a common agreement on is at least you leave it all on the field. Yeah. You can, your touch can be off. You can miss your chances. You can be picking up yellow cards. You can feel like the, the, the heaviness in your legs, you're, you're never going to be able to track yeah. back. But as long as you give it 100%, I think that's part of what people confuse when they're thinking about mentality, yeah. is how do you leave it all on the field? And how, how does that message, because I see guys every single day that show up and guys that are in their mid-30s that give everything they have every single day, whether it's 5v2, possession, short side, small side, full size, how, how do you, that, that, the energy, but how important it is, the immediacy, of giving everything that they have every single day. Well, yeah, I mean, let's go back to what you started saying about, you know, the pinky toe not having that, uh, that as much talent and you would show up every day, do this and that. Everything described is the epitome of a professional. Yeah. That, that, that's a, a given with what it takes to become a professional, all right? Um, when I look at, God, I could go off all day on certain things like this. You know, let, let me, listen, the mentality for our group, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, the mentality for our group is, is good, okay? But you take after the game, Robin Frazier, who is a very close and personal friend of yeah. mine, uh, who was my assistant coach in New York. Um, Greg Vanny, who I played with, who I'm very good friends with and are very candid with me. 
They have a roster with three guys that we talked about, uh, I talked about this week. Three guys on the team, and it could be, if I really crunch the numbers, it could be two of their three guys that make up our entire salary cap. Yeah. That's the way it is, you know? Uh, you, you look at our market, where we are, our philosophy. You look at their philosophy, okay? And when I talk to Greg and Robin and I say to them, give me an assessment of my team. Give me an assessment leading up to this game. Give me an assessment of tonight because I trust you, I value your opinions, mm -hmm. and we're close enough that we could do that. Um, and we only play you once a year, you're in the East Coast, yeah. so you're not gonna and get a scouting report. Yeah. And I won't tell you everything they said, but the one thing they said was, the talent that you guys have, when they show up, mm -hmm. and when they're on board, and as you saw last year, and when the mentality is 100%, is on top of the league with other teams. Yeah. Not better than any other teams, but at top of the team. And there was a big but there. And then we got into the conversation of mentality. You know, the way they selected the team, the players that they purchased for a lot have that mentality. It was interesting because we prepared the entire week to play Toronto for two ways. Uh, five in the back that they play mm. or a 4-4-2 diamond that they play. Yeah. What happens? We get out there, they play a 4-4-2 flat. I learned after the game from Greg and Robin that they decided to play that formation, which they've never really coached, never really played, at the locker room right before the game started. But they have the mentality. They have the players that... Bam, could listen, Absolutely. could grasp it, and can do it. And listen, that's where we want to get to. And I have no doubt we will get to it. It's fascinating because it can be a damning indictment of saying when they show up, or it could be a, a, it could be a statement that is about the potential of what this group has. Yeah. And is there a way to, and it's, it's early, you know, there's ups and downs that's, of any season. And, and that's, it's, it's incredibly long, uh, Major League Soccer. And it is forgiving, and yet it is incredibly punishing. Is there a way to kind of, I guess, convey that inside the locker room? That, listen, from the outside looking in, everybody looks at this group and says, top to bottom on your day, hands down. Some of the, collectively, some mm -hmm. of the best in the league. But if you don't show up, where this league is, they're going to get you. Yeah. What is That's it? What, what, what mentality. Is it you go like One this word. and that means, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's mentality. You said it right there. I've had a number of meetings over the last two weeks, and it's, it's very, it's important for me to say it's not out of nerve, nerves, it's not out of panicking. Yeah. It's four games in. You know, if you break down our game so far, where we thought we might be after these four games at six points, six, seven points, if we're realistic, yeah. you know, two road games, two home games. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're two points off right now. You know, you can look at it that way. There is no panic there is no issues whatsoever. What is is that me demanding, and, and I'm a perfectionist, and I want every day to be perfect, and I have to have my assistant coaches tell me after that practice, Mike, it was a good practice, actually, yeah. really good practice, because that's the way I think. I harp on little things, all right? And we are going to get there, you know? And, and, and there are, have been, even in the losses, uh, even in the ties, th there, there have been some very good soccer. Yeah. And again, but the thing I'll say is, you know, paper is a lot different than a field. Yeah. You know, we do have all the talent yeah. in the world, and now we just, you know, we have to continue to put it together. Striving for perfection. Yeah. I think that's why we saw yeah. the run. I'm going to give you one really interesting story, if you don't mind, real quick. Um, in my old job, which you always hear me say my old job. Yeah. I very rarely say where it was or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my old job, yeah. um, I had a poker night uh, once a month, and it was at my house with my local friends. And that was a way for me to just decompress. You know, it was $5 to pot, whatever it was, and we play for a couple hours, we talk and have fun. Once a month I have that. What happens? Five minutes into the poker game this one night, I get a phone call. It's my boss uh, at the time, who was Andy Roxburgh. For those who don't know Andy yeah, Roxburgh, yeah. he was a former technical director almost, almost 20 years for UEFA, which is a nice way of saying that he taught, taught the coaches how he to taught, coach. Yeah, he, he taught, he taught Pep, Guardi uh, yeah. Pep Guardiola in his coaching course, Jose Mourinho, all these guys. Brilliant, unbelievable mind. Of course I have to answer it. You know, I'm all in. Give me a second. Yeah. Go upstairs and I answer. He goes, Mike, he goes, uh, I, I, someone here wants to say hello. This very thick Scottish accent gets on the phone. And right away I'm going, because I know he's friends with this guy. He yeah. talks about him. I'm like, no, 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 no. Mike, this is Sir Alex Ferguson. Now I'm literally standing up. I had to sit down on the bed. And I'm like, I don't know what to call him. Yeah. You know, Mr. Ferguson, Sir Alex, how are yeah. you? Nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And he gets right to the point. He goes, tell me about the team. What are your concerns? What are this? Not even a house things, just right to the point. Yeah. And... Long story short, we got into a conversation about there was a very key player, if you could put it all together, who it might be, very key player who was larger than life, unbelievable talent, but the team 
fed off of him. Yeah. And a lot of times they fed off him in a negative way. And before I could say to him, what experience have you had with this, which is laughable, yeah. and what would you do? He says, get rid of him. That's what he says. <laughs> and I said, excuse me? He goes, get rid of him. And I said, yeah, you don't understand the rules of the league. You know, it's not like Man United where we get rid of one superstar and we have 18 from one, the yeah. academy and reserve. Yep. You can't do that, you know? And he says, well, do you want to win? Do you want to succeed? I said, yeah. He goes, well, you have to get rid of the players who are not buying in, the players who are not following your, 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 your message. Uh, or the other thing is you get them on board quick. And it was a very valuable lesson for me, just very simple what he said but extremely valuable to me is that there's no player, which I knew already, but for him to reinforce, no player bigger than the team, no bet player bigger than the collective goal. And, and that carried with that with me, and that's perhaps what came out this week. Again, there's no issues or anything like that. It's just that you start seeing what you want in 30 players, and maybe one goes astray once in a while, and, and you have to bring them back in somehow. Did that conversation with that player happen before or after that phone call? Uh, the conversation happened about a week and a half after. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And it was pretty like public, it. too. Yeah, no, it, hey, this is what the Mike Pecky Coaches Show's about. Hey, happy anniversary, by the way. I'm not sure if you realize this, but uh, this isn't just the celebration of this fourth amazing show we have here. This weekend <laughs> will mark exactly one year to the day uh, that you had your first home match. What, what do you remember when you go back and you think about that snowy night, the orange ball mm. coming in, uh, the last-minute game winner, at uh, Rio Tinto. Wow, for a minute I thought they, they, in Utah they do four-week anniversaries. <laughs> uh, I was like, whoa, what, what, am I getting something here? Get a card. What do I remember besides it being bitterly cold? Um, what I honestly remember is it happened so, to use my word, so freaking fast yeah. from going from the Monarchs to the first team, mm -hmm. literally in a snap of the fingers. I didn't really have time to think. I will say this, the first time that I addressed a team uh, prior to that, th that, that game, uh, which is the first time I really met as a group, I was extremely nervous. Uh, anxious and nervous yeah. that I had so much I wanted to convey and it just got all caught up on my head and I think I got two things out that were, thank God, were the two key things <laughs> and I completely <laughs> forgot the five other things I wanted to say to them and it was just like, let's get to work. Yeah. And then I walked out of the room because I was so like this. It was a whirlwind, you know? It was something that, you know, I, I wanted eventually to get back into the league at, at, in a good club uh, did I think it was going to happen then? No, I wasn't expecting to it. I, I, you know, I wasn't looking for it. Uh, it happened so fast. In the snow game, um, we talk about mentality, you know, and you think about before that game, it's a team that hadn't had a win since August of the previous yeah. year. Yeah. And for them to go out there and win and then win the following weekend on the road, that shows you right there the talent is always there, but it comes down to the mentality. And thank God this is a 34-game season, and we're talking about this four games in, yeah. uh, because they showed it that in those two games. Then we hit the lull, and the mentality came back. So, you know, I, I, what I remember is it was a whirlwind. It was quick. It happened fast, and the guys responded. On and off the field, whirlwind, a year. Um, what? How have you changed? How have you evolved <laughs> in this in this in this 12 months here? There's a lot of things that I've changed incredibly. Um, and there's a lot of things that I stuck to my guns, and, and some of the things I stick to my guns is, is not necessarily good. Mm. You know, I, I'm a guy that, let, let's take, this is just an example. I don't want too many people reading the things. As an example, you know, a, a player doesn't do what I want him to do. I'll have a rule of five or six meetings. It's a rule of five. Mm. You know, it's not one and then done. You bring him in and talk, you talk, you talk, and I get myself to a breaking point. And then from that breaking point, I completely fall off. You know, there's a, a, an old story. Well, I, can't, I can't tell the story, actually. But anyway, <laughs> um, but I have started to adapt in that way. Yeah. You know, is that not to be so reactory. Re, what's the reactive? Word? Reactive, there you go. Not to be so reactive. Um, but the way, I, the way I've changed a little bit is that I rely a lot more on my coaching staff. You know, I value their opinion, whereas when I first came in, as a coach, I wanted everything to be done my way. Yeah. And I had Robin Frazier, the, the, one of the best coaches in the league history, yeah. taking the brunt of it, not really including him. And then I came around. Uh, but you're constantly adapting. This is an ever, you know, you know this, the world of soccer is changing both tactically, mentally. You know, we talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dealing with agents, dealing with different personalities on, on a daily basis. If you don't keep up with that trend, and I'm not saying everything you adapt to, but if you don't adapt to the things that are gonna help the team, then you're gonna lay off behind. Is it is it hard knowing knowing your mentality and knowing you uh, as a coach, but knowing you as a as a human being, as a father, as as a man, as a husband? 
Um, is it, you talk about that rule of five. Do you, do you find yourself acting in a way that you wanted to be treated as a player in terms of direct, honest, no. um, transparent? Not, not, not a lot, to be honest with you. And again, that goes back to what we've talked before about do I expect everybody to adopt my exact mentality yeah. of who I am? No, everybody has differently. You know, for me, I wanted up front and right away. And I was, I have that, I don't have an ego enough and, I, and I'm that centered in myself that I could say this to you, to the coach, you know, this, uh, whatever. Yeah. But I'm going home and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And I'm always honest with myself in the mirror. Yeah. You know, the conversations I have with, 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 with this team last year and this year throughout losses, when we go and do video and I point things out, is guys, the first person I'm pointing a finger at is myself. Mm. You know, I don't just go home after a loss and say, ah, you know, there's the next game. There's the next game, and it's with the kids bouncing over my knee and playing ball or whatever. No, I take these things personally. Um, so I don't even know where I was going with that. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's transition to this. Yeah. There, there, was a, there was a very specific moment in that snowball game uh, where Luis Silva uh, kind of did a flyby, and he picked up oh, a yeah, chunk of that. snow. Did you see him chuck the no. ball? Uh, or Chuck the, the <laughs> no, and actually, look at Tim Parker. What was that? This is the best part. Tim yeah. Parker goes, he looks to play the ball, Luis just kind of chucks a little snowball. He's like, huh? huh? What was that? No, no, actually, but I remember seeing it the day or two after, and I said, oh, we'll probably he's probably gonna get suspended for that. <laughs> no, n n knowing how things go in this league. Oh man, um, and, and and since last week, you made me play an unexpected game. By the way, oh, I filed an official report. The fact that. Briggsy had lived in the States for six years, and I was forced Who'd you file the not to report with? with Tyler okay. Gibbons in your ear. Um, I thought this week I'd return the favor. Uh, oh this is a game uh, that we like to call the celebrity look-alike. It's pretty easy. I'm going to pull up a couple different pictures. You're going to tell me which one of your friends uh, that this looks like. My friends. Yeah, your okay. friends. Uh, right. Easy enough, right? All right, let's see it. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we're working with. Who's well, the guy on the right? Well, I don't understand what this means. That's The Rock and Mark Briggs. All right. All I right. thought you were going to show, like, The Rock, and I had to say, who does he look like? Well, okay. let, let yeah. name the celebrity. Who's coming up oh, next? The Rock. So, Mark Briggs and The Rock. Okay, let's let's go to number two. <laughs> Matt Gash and, uh, God, what the heck's his name? Come on. Who is it? Who is it? By Come the on. way, I know where this is going, by yeah, the way. No, well, let's go. I know Come where on. this is going. Come on, Mike. Who is this guy? <sighs> I don't know his name, but I know every movie he's been in. Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. I didn't even. All right, and then Matt Gash. Uh oh. Craig, <laughs> Craig Weibel and the dude from. Uh, um, I don't know his name, but he's from the Bad Show. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Heisenberg. Heisenberg. I didn't know that. And uh, by the way, he's telling you the name in your ear. No. But, but whatever. What do you mean? Whatever. And I know it's coming. Go I'm ahead. a Netflix savant. Oh, there. my oh. God. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Well, that's... Who's that? That's Mike Pecky and some guy that wants to look like Mike Pecky, according to you. Freddie, Freddie Prince Jr. Prince you Jr. say that to me every time. There's I don't see the resemblance whatsoever i don't see the resemblance no, whatsoever he, not, I, I, I see a lot of resemblance i don't his lips are ugh. <laughs> his no, lips. i don't like it i don't like the, 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 the gap in his eyes my oh, closer no. we're one step closer to full power power struggle <laughs> week in week out hey thanks for joining us for another edition of the mike pecky coaches show we'll see you at the riot saturday against the vancouver Whitecaps. make sure you get to the stadium early support the boys and right here same place same time next week. See you at Takashi tonight.